Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What another amazing and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks. Another day to always give him the praise. Another day to worship the Lord. Another day to always be in his presence. Another day to seek him. Another day for us to continue to pour our heart out to him. Another day for us to continue to pick up our crosses and follow him no matter what it looked like. Another day that we choose in faith over fear. And another day to say, thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to say another day. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to be in your presence another day. Thank you, Jesus, because I'm still holding on to your, to your unchangeable hands. Thank you, Jesus, for being so merciful to me. Thank you, Jesus, for being so faithful to me. Thank you, Jesus, for being my healer. Thank you, Jesus, for being my provider. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Father God, I don't know where I'd be at right now today. Hallelujah. If I didn't have you in my life today, Jesus. Father God, I'd be going crazy. I'd be in a psych war, God. If I didn't have you in my life, if you was not using me, if you was not watching over me, if you was not protecting me, God, Father God, I'd have went crazy a long time ago. God, I'm so thankful that I gave my life over to you, God. Because when I was messed up out there in that world, God, I didn't know I was coming and I didn't know I was going. God, I'm so thankful that you saved me. I'm so thankful, Father God, that you chose me. I'm so thankful, Father God, that you considered me. I'm so thankful, Father God, that you even rolled the dice on me, God. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful, God. Praise is an everyday thing. And I'm going to tell y'all a little about praise, my brothers and my sisters. Praise come from love. That's where praise come from. And when you have the same amount of love that Jesus has for you, and that you and that he has, that you have for him, that's what praise is all about. See, some people this praise is because they want something. Some people praise because they're in need of anything. Some people praise this only on Sundays. But when you praise every single day from the bottom of your heart, it's because the love that you have for Jesus, the commitment that you have for Jesus, the hunger, the thirst, the dedication, and the bond that you have for Jesus. And it is a living lion that is roaring inside of you right now today, my sisters and my brothers. That's why. You continue to seek him. That's why you continue to hold on. That's why you continue to pick up your cross and follow him. That's why you continue to choose faith over fear. And that's why you continue to come on YouTube and always listen to a word. And always listen to a powerful message. That's why you praise him the way you do. It's because of the love and the magnitude of your love that you have for him. Let your love shine on you today. Let your love praise right now. Let your love sing right now. Let your love shout right now. Let your love prophesy right now. Because praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. And the reason why it's an everyday thing because our God, the God that we serve, the God that we praise, the God that we worship, he is still on the throne. Glory, hallelujah. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. And he is still taking care of business right now today, this year, and this season, right now today. Allow praise to be on the fruit of your tongue. Allow praise to seek in and soak in into your heart and also to your spirit right now today. Open up your mouth and give Jesus a shout out of praise and give Jesus a shout out of glory right now today in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah! We thank you. We magnify your holy name right now today, Jesus. We glorify your name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you in this place, God. Father God, let your praise rain down on my sisters today. Father God, let your praise rain down on my brothers today. Glory. I say glory. I say glory. I say glory. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you in this place. I say we thank you in this place. I say we thank you, Jesus. 
in this place. And let the church say amen and amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you for another beautiful and awesome day today. Thank you, Heavenly Father God, that you allow myself and all my sisters and all my brothers today to come together, Father God, as one in your house and your sanctuary today, God, to fellowship your name, to praise your name, to glorify your name, to magnify your name, and also to exalt your name in your place today. Father God, there's no place, God, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, God. I said, but in your house, do them. What we need to do best, seeking you, praising you, and worshiping God. Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, and it cannot be shaken, and it cannot fail, and it cannot be bothered by no storm or by anything can bother. Father God, your house, where we in right now today, I say your house, God, not our house, but your house. It's a house of prayer and a house of praise. Right now, God, we are praying in your house. And after we get through praying, God, we're going to praise your name in your house. We're going to have worship in your house. We're going to have fellowship in your house. We're going to have service in your house. And we're going to give you the glory. Hallelujah. I said we're going to give you the glory. Hallelujah. In your house. Thank you, Jesus. The word also tells us in the book of Matthew, verses 18 and 19. But two or more gathered in your name, hallelujah, that you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now. I know that you're in the midst of our laptops, our desktops, our iPad, or whatever gadget we have, or whatever gadget we're using. God, I know that you're in the midst of it. Father God, you have your way right now today, God. Father God, I'm asking you in your holy, precious, mighty name to place a fresh, new anointing over my sister's life and head right now today. Father God, I'm asking you to place a fresh, new anointing over my brother's head and life today. Father God, I'm also asking you to do a new thing through my sisters right now today, God. Father God, I'm also asking you to do a new thing through my brothers right now today, God. Father God, you have your way in this place today, God. You lift your sons up right now today, God. You lift your daughters up right now today, God. Move through their life right now today, God. Touch them and heal them in every area of their body right now today, God. They need healing right now. They need touching right now, Father God. Some of my brothers, some of my sisters right now today, God, they need a little TLC. They need a little tender, loving care. And God, there's nobody who can give them that much tender, loving care, God, but you. Because your word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, that we need to cast all our anxieties and problems on you two right now today. Father God, I believe and I declare that my brothers and my sisters, whatever it is, God, that's holding them back, that's hindering them, that's giving them trouble, that's giving them anxiety, that's giving them depression, that's giving them, Father God, for not to reach out to you. I believe and I declare right now today, God, they are tired of holding on to it, and they're going to give it to you right now today, God, because your word says that no one cares for them more than you, God. Father God, allow your spirit to move through my brothers and my sisters and through me today, God, and through this place. Father God, you surround your love around your sons and your daughters and even myself today. Holy Spirit, I need you to move in this place. Holy Spirit, I need you to move to my sisters. Holy Spirit, I need you to move to my brothers. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now today to remove the fish scales from my brothers and my sisters' eyes today so they can see everything clearly, whatever it is that Jesus needs them to see. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to remove the earplugs from their ear today so they can hear clearly whatever it is that Jesus needs them to hear today, whatever they need to be focused on today. And God, we lift these prayers up to you right now today, knowing that you listened to them, knowing that you heard. We thank you, Father God, for this blessing. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this outing, God. We thank you, Father God, that we're about to have some praise and we know that you're about to show up and we know that you're about to show out. So, Father God, we give you the thanks, praise, and glory in your holy, precious, mighty name. Let the church come together and say amen, amen, and amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah!
We thank you today, Jesus. We magnify your holy name in this place right now today. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. I'm here today to repent of our sins. Yes, we dropped the ball today. Yes, we made some mistakes today. Yes, we even feel sure of his grace and his mercy today. That's why we need him more and more because we do drop the ball. We do make mistakes. And if you don't need Jesus more and more in your life every day, something wrong because I need him more. That's why I repent of my sins. I'm not perfect. We all fall short of his grace and his mercy. That's why we need him more. And I need all my fellow sisters I need all my fellow brothers right now today. You know exactly who you are. I'm not expecting everybody to, to be honest with God right now. I'm not expecting everybody to keep it real with God right now. But I'm expecting the ones who's going to keep it real, who's going to be honest, and who's really about their life and say, I'm on board to repent of my sins today. Heavenly Father God, I boldly confess and I ask in your name right now today. In the mighty name of Jesus, please forgive me my sisters, and all my brothers right now today for every anything, God, we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, I boldly ask of you in the mighty name of Jesus, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, God, that we had in our heart, God, that was not part of you. Father God, I boldly confess, and I'm asking your holy, precious, mighty name right now today to please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, God, that we that we participated in our mind, God, that was not part of your Father's will. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us right now today, Jesus. Clean us up as white as snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I'm asking you to say thank you right now today in your holy, precious, mighty name. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us out. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. You didn't have to do it, but you did anyway. And we thank you. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this came thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank enough for this word. I can't thank enough for this anointing message. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for the air that we was able to breathe right now today. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank enough, Father God, for our health and our strength. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared to put on our table, the clothes and shoes that you put on our back. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for the air that we was able to breathe right now. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for your words right now. I can't thank enough, Father God, for your promises right now. I can't thank enough, Father God, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now today. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because you are a man that you should not lie, that you stand in your words, that you stand in your promises. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because you never fail us, that you never disappoint us, that you never leave us or forsake us. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because you always keep it real and you always are on time, God. You are faithful, God. You are merciful, God. You are loving, God. You are kind, God. You are glorious, God. And I just can't thank you, no, Father God, whenever we have a problem, Jesus, that we can always call on you, that we can always depend on you, and we can always rely on you. We ain't got to worry about, Jesus, that you're going to tear and run our business and put it all on Facebook and put it on social media, and we just can't thank you, no, Father God, because we know that you are for us, God. It doesn't matter who's against us, long that you are for us, God, and we just can't thank you enough for that. I just can't thank you, no, Father God, how you moving mountains right now today. On the behalf of my brothers and my sisters right now, and we don't even see it or realize it right now. I just can't thank enough for our blessing right now. I can't thank enough for our breakthrough right now. I can't thank enough, Father God, for the fresh new anointing that you have placed on us right now. I can't thank enough for the deliverance right now. I can't thank enough for the help right now. I can't thank enough for the connection right now. I can't thank enough for the resources right now. I can't thank enough for the rain right now. I can't thank enough for the second chance right now. I can't thank enough for the opportunity that you've given us right now. I can't thank enough for the open doors. I can't thank enough for the door that's left closed. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because you're about to open up the floodgates of heaven, and you're about to pour out a blessing on my sisters, a blessing on my brothers, a blessing on seven LT, that we're going to receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 
I just can't think you enough, Jesus. I just can't think you enough, Jesus. I just can't think you enough, Jesus. I just can't think you enough, Jesus. I just can't think you enough, Jesus. I just can't think you enough, Jesus. I just can't think you enough, Jesus. I just can't think you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't think you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't think you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't think you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't think you enough. That's why I brag about you the way I do. That's why I boast about you the way I do. That's why I shout out your holy name the way I do. Glory, hallelujah. Because I just can't think you enough. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't think you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen, but let Jesus know right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough in Jesus' holy mighty name. Because he died for every last one of our sins. All the math, you say, Jesus, I can't thank you enough. Glory! Hallelujah. Can I talk to my brothers today? Can I talk to my sisters today? And you realize by some of you, you're not getting along with people in your friendship, in your relationship, or even your marriage. The reason why you're not getting along, the reason why it's not working out, the reason why you're not prospering, the reason why you're not getting ahead in life is because a dead battery cannot jumpstart another dead battery. A dead soul cannot help another dead soul. It is pointless. It is useless. But some of y'all, you, you can't magnify to even realize that. And you thinking everybody's your friend. You thinking everybody's your boo. You thinking everybody's your sweet thing. You thinking everybody want what you got. How can you help me when your battery don't even have the equipment to jumpstart me? How can you motivate me when you can't even motivate yourself when your soul and your spirit is dead? How? I'd be a fool to even take advice from you. I'd be a fool to even listen to you. And it took me a long time to figure this out. It took me a long time to realize why things are not going right in my life before I came into the presence of the Lord. I wonder why me and this friend never got along. I wonder why I was always stuck with the chickens. I was always wondering why I was still stuck in the in the pool, but it was three feet, but I noticed 12 feet was down there. But I know that 12 feet part, it was nobody there, but it was a whole bunch of people from three feet to five feet. And I said, God, why is nobody going past five feet? And God said, the reason why son, nobody's going past past five feet is because a dead battery cannot jumpstart another dead battery. A dead soul cannot move or motivate or even try to give advice to another person who have another dead soul. It ain't gonna work. It's pointless. It's useless. And some of you right now today, you are going through that right now. You wonder why your relationship ain't going, going nowhere. How can that brother... Help you, my sisters, when his battery is just as dead as yours. How can that brother help you, my sisters, when his spirit is just as dead as yours? That's pointless. It's useless. Where are y'all going? You're looking at the same picture. You're looking at the same view. And somebody got to say, hold up. Wait a minute. Something is wrong right here. I don't saw this picture, motion picture, way too many times. I don't saw this scene way too many times. I don't saw this scenery way too many times. What is it? And the reason why you continue to see that same scene, that same scenery, is because a dead battery cannot jumpstart another dead battery. A dead spirit cannot help and move and motivate another dead spirit. Eventually, what y'all gonna do, y'all gonna continue to hit heads. Y'all gonna clash. If you have not hit heads yet, and if you have not clashed yet, get ready. It's about to happen sooner than later. Some of my sisters, how can you motivate your husband or your boyfriend when your spirit is just not right neither? How can you have your husband, your boyfriend back when your battery cannot even jumpstart his? It's pointless. It's useless. What good is it 
that y'all guys still together, but neither one of y'all can help each other. What good is y'all to still continue to be together when y'all can't help each other? Y'all can't motivate each other. Y'all can't push each other. It ain't going nowhere. Two negatives does not make a positive at all. It is what it is. You are negative and he is negative. And when both y'all are negative, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't budging. It ain't moving. And it's go the same thing in the friendship. Why do you think your friendship is not helping the other friend? Because the other friend don't want nothing in life and he don't want you to have anything in life. He can't push you to be a better man. She can't push you to be another woman when he don't want to be a better man and when she don't want to be a better woman. How? Both y'all in the same pool. Both y'all in the same category. And it took me a long time. I remember when I was out there in the world. I thought these people was my friend. But the more I kept looking, I said, but we ain't going nowhere. We're doing the same thing. You can't push me. And at that time, I couldn't even push them. So what we was doing, we was chasing our own tail. And all of a sudden, when I got tired of chasing my own tail, I had to remove myself. I said, self, what's happening? Self, what's going on? And my alter ego said, you need to take inventory of yourself. Who could you hanging around with? Is, no, is there any person in that circle that is positive? Is there anybody in that group of friends is doing something with their life? Are they constructive? Are they spiritual? And I looked at everybody and I looked at myself. The first thing I did before I looked at them, I analyzed myself. I said, I'm not, I wasn't even spiritual at that time. So I can't even motivate them. So when I looked at them, I said, okay, they're in the same thing like I am. I hear drinking, smoking, and hustling, doing things that we shouldn't be doing. I said, I can't motivate them. They can't motivate me. But when I took all the drugs, the alcohol, and the marijuana, and I flushed it down the toilet stool in 2011, when I said no more that I want to hustle again, no more that I want to drink again. No more that I want to smoke marijuana again. No more I want to go to the club again. No more I want to hang with negative people again. No more I want to, I want to hang with people who don't want that of life again. Then my spirit was able to jump start. I got a kick start. The Holy Spirit rejuvenated, revived me. I was alive again. I was a new person again. I had a new heart. A new think of mind, a new perspective of life. And once I was able to take my jumper cables, my jumper cables, and plug them to somebody else and get them inspiration and get them help and get them life, I realized I was on the right path. I realized I was doing the right thing. But before that, I was just like a dead battery, just like some of y'all are. I realized at that time I was just like a dead spirit, just like some of y'all are. I can't motivate at that time my girlfriend because I, I can't jumpstart her and she can't jumpstart me. I can't talk to her positive because I was not even positive. My spirit was dead. Her spirit was dead. Wonder why we was on and off and on and off and back on again. Two toxic people is never going to work. Two people got a dead battery, it's never going to work. Two people got a dead spirit, it's never going to work. I don't care what you do or try to do, it's never going to work. That's why the relationship is failing. That's why the friendship is failing. And that's why the marriage is failing. Neither one of y'all can help each other. And if you think that you helping each other is in the, ba in the bedroom, that's going to get old sooner or later. Okay, what else you giving me? What else that you bring to the table besides that? If that's the only thing that you got to offer me, you ain't offering much. If that's the only thing that you're going to bring to the table, you ain't bringing it. There's no value in sex. There's no value for me just hanging up with you all day long in the bedroom. I need more than that. If you want to make it out of life. If you want to be prosperous out of life. It has to be more than what you're trying to give me. Because that's going to get old soon. And I believe that has got old with a lot of my sisters right now. I believe that has got old with some of my brothers right now. Even the friends. You probably said, yeah, we've been friends 
for a long time. But I see that you don't want nothing out of life. I do. I see that you can't motivate me. You can't uplift me. You can't speak a kind word to me. You can't give me wisdom. You can't give me knowledge. So why am I still being, being friends with you? I got to cut the cord. God got to rejuvenate some of y'all like he rejuvenated me. And when God rejuvenated, he took his cable cords and plugged it up to me. And when he plugged his cable cords up to me, I was revived. Then I was able, help me Jesus, I was able to sharpen another brother. I was able to sharpen another sister. The point of this message is iron sharpens iron. If that brother or that sister cannot sharpen you, there's no friend of yours. If that brother, my sister can't sharpen you, he is not your boo, he is not your lover, he is not your boyfriend, he is not your man, and he is not your husband. My brother, if that sister cannot sharpen you, she's not your love, she's not your sweet thing, she's not your everything, she's a no thing. And I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. Some of you right now today, you got to realize the people that you hang with right now today, if they're not motivating you, and they're not pushing you to be your best, if they're not bringing anything to the table but negativity, gossip, just want to have sex all the time, it's time for y'all to remove the trash. It's time for you to leave the chickens where they at and find someone who can jumpstart you. If they can't jumpstart your spirit, they can jumpstart you to be a better man or a better woman or a better husband or a better wife. It's time for y'all to open your eyes and say, Jesus, I don't want this no more. Remove anything that's not belong to you. And we're going to read two Bible verses. The first one, we're going to read 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Do not be misled. Point blank. Do not be misled by a dead spirit. Do not be misled by a dead battery. They come from friends. They come from husbands, or boyfriends, girlfriends, or wife, in-laws, or family members, people at the church, or people at the job. Do not be misled. Because if you let another dead battery mislead you, where well, y'all going? Straight down. If you allow a person got a dead spirit to mislead you, where are you going? Nowhere. That's why it's time for y'all to cut some people out of your life. It's time for you to ask God to remove some people out of your life. Amen. Bad company corrupts what? Good character. Bad company corrupts good character. Who are the bad company? The dead souls and the dead spirits. I don't care. If you've been friends with this person for 20 years, if their company and their spirit is bad and their attitude and their character is bad and they cannot, uh, they can't jumpstart you, it's time for you to cut some people out. It's time, for, it's time for you to ask God to remove some people out of your life because a dead battery and another dead battery ain't going nowhere. There's no charge to it. There's no electricity to it. There's no fire to it. So where are you going? A dead spirit cannot move another dead spirit. You can't even move a rock. It's only five pounds. Because his spirit is dead and your spirit is dead. Where are y'all going? Nowhere. A chicken and chicken always going to stay on the ground. But an eagle, I know, flies high. And his soars high because he knows where his help at. The eagle know that Jesus can jumpstart him or her. I know who can jumpstart me. It's time for y'all to ask Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need some jumper cables. Can you jumpstart me so I can be able to jumpstart somebody else? Because the people who I'm hanging with right now today, they're no good to me. This boyfriend of mine, this husband of mine, I know, God, that you don't like divorces, but his spirit is dead and his battery is dead. I know I made a mistake, but God, where's this marriage going to? Where's this relationship going to? If he cannot help me or motivate me, why I'm still doing with a dead battery? Why I'm still doing with a dead spirit? Father God, 
this woman right here today, she can't motivate me. She can't uplift me. Her spirit is dead. Her battery is dead. The only that she is offering me is some booty. God, that's not good enough for me. There's no value in that. I'm just keeping it real. I ain't sugarcoating it. God, that's going to get old sooner than later. I need a woman who is spiritual. I need a woman who's motivated. I need a woman, Father God, who, whose battery it stays on charge. I need a woman, God, whose spirit on charge. And some of my sisters, you need a man whose battery is always on charge and his spirit is always on charge so he can uplift you and so he can move you and so he can push you and motivate you. You need a positive battery. You need a positive spirit in your life. Because this dead stuff y'all got going on ain't going nowhere. It's like fright night. It's scaring both of you. When you going to wake up and smell the coffee? Let's go to Proverbs 27. And we're going to read verse 17. Proverbs 27. And we're going to read verse 17. And if you have it, let the church say amen. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. If that brother Cannot sharpen you, my brother. It's time for you to find another brother who can sharpen you. My sister, if that sister cannot sharpen you, uplift you, it's time for you to find another sister. If that husband or that boyfriend cannot sharpen you, my sisters, it's time for y'all to find someone else. My brothers, if that woman cannot sharpen you, uplift you, it's time for you to find somebody else. Iron sharpens iron. A dead battery cannot charge another dead battery. A dead spirit cannot help or uplift another dead spirit. The point I'm making right now today, it's time to ask God and say, God, please put your jumper capers on me and jumpstart me so I can sharpen somebody else. I don't know who this word for today. I don't know who God talking to today. But somebody need a boost right now. Somebody need to be revived right now. Somebody need to be rejuvenated right now. And the only person that can revive you and rejuvenate you, the only person can put their hands on you and jumpstart you right now today is Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need a jump. And if you need a jump from Jesus right now, ask him right now today. I, I, I believe and declare that he will jumpstart you. And when God put them cable cords to you, you're going to be able to jumpstart anybody that's because of all that negativity. Your spirit will be a different spirit and your battery will be a positive and charged spirit. Iron, sharpen irons. Amen? Amen. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, my YouTube channel is with us.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've seen their face. Prayer help. I just ask y'all guys to continue to pray for me and keep me lifted up too. And I just know that God is about to jumpstart somebody today. And I hope that this word and I hope that this message for somebody today because I'm ready to jumpstart my brothers and sisters today. If you need help, I'm here. Stay blessed. Amen.